Hello everyone, artist Charles Wolf here. We're going to do another painting today, so let's get right to it. I'm going to start out here with a textured canvas that I prepared with some PVA glue. Placed directly onto the canvas, I moved it around with an old chip brush and then blow dried the entire thing partially. I don't want it to be totally dry, I want it to have some play, so if you touch it with your fingers, it should still move and react to your fingers, but not come off in a sticky mess. Taking my palette knife, I am beginning to spread out some alizarin crimson mixed with some prism violet. This is acrylic paint that I'm using, and this is a fairly large canvas, it's 24 by 24 inches, which is pretty big for me, I don't usually get much bigger than that. But I might someday, we'll see. Reloading my knife, I'm taking some more of the crimson, pulling downwards and mixing it back into the purple. Other videos that I've created that use this textured canvas idea include autumn leaves or spring leaves to see a similar technique. Taking some of the prism violet, I'm going to begin about oh, halfway down the canvas on the right hand side. You'll notice that there's a little bit of red, a little bit of crimson peeking through. That's because I did not clean off my knife, and I scraped it right into the purple pile of paint that I have next to me. Another great place for you to find out about how I textured this canvas is the time-lapse version of this very same painting, Networks, and you will see that in the time-lapse I do show how I put the PVA glue onto the palette and how I spread it around as well as some of the blow-drying. I am working the prism right into the crimson, creating a little bit of a gradation. I'm going to add a little bit more purple here, sort of spontaneously. This painting is somewhat thought out and somewhat planned, but whenever I'm doing a large abstract, I like to leave some of it up to chance and to go with my gut as I am painting, allowing the composition to unfold. I find that for me, it makes the process so much more exciting and free. You may have noticed that I'm using a very large metal spatula. Sometimes you can just paint with what's lying around your house and not have to go buy a bunch of fancy brushes and, and knives. Sometimes an old spatula will work just fine. I am trying to wipe off some of the excess paint that is stuck onto the bottom of this spatula. To create a painting very similar to this one, you only need a spatula, a palette knife, and an old chip brush for the texturing. Other than that, you're good to go. I'm going to switch here from the cool alizarin crimson to a much brighter and intense hot namthal red. It's a very warm color on the palette, and I'm using it for contrast. So basically, you have the alizarin crimson, which is a darker, deeper red that melds into the prism quite nicely. And from this darker hue emerging outward is going to be this burst of brighter colors. I want this to be a very hot, vibrant painting. And what better color to use than this cadmium orange hue for that vibrant fire? You may notice again that there is a little bit of namthal red mixed into that orange, and that's on purpose because... I did not clean off the bottom of my spatula before I began spreading out the orange and allowed the two colors to commingle and play off one another. Just scraping off the excess here. Taking my smaller palette knife, there's a dash of namphthal red. Squeezing some more cadmium orange hue out of the bottle and then playing the red into the orange a little bit more. Compositionally, I knew I had four colors I wanted to use to create this work. Orange, yellow, red, and purple. Specifically, I knew I wanted to use the cadmium orange hue as sort of a binding agent, as a color that would kind of run throughout the entire painting and help pull the whole thing together. I also knew I wanted some hot spikes and bursts of yellow, as well as some contrast of the deeper alizarin crimson I mentioned before and used at the very beginning as well as the darker prism violet. The namphthal red is going to pop and provide a nice counterpoint to the orange. When creating this work, I thought about where my darks were going to be and where the lighter portions were going to be, and I tried to make sure that each color gets to reach one of the borders. I knew I also wanted to have each color 
escaping some way off the canvas. And so that was sort of the game I was playing as I was putting these colors down, was finding a way for each color to reach the border and then enter the center, interact in some interesting way, and then get back out. I'm bringing in a little bit more of the alizarin crimson and spreading it out here. Again, returning to my cool colors, working on them for a little bit after I've put some of my hot colors more prominently like the orange, for instance. One element that I need to talk about a little bit is the shapes that I'm creating. I'm just really striving to avoid squares, to avoid too many lines at this point. I really want these large swaths of color that are sort of drifting, almost like clouds here and there, wherever they want to go. A few of them are triangular in shape, Overall, though, many of them are interacting with the borders at a diagonal, which I think adds a lot of interest to the piece. Spreading this crimson down with long strokes of my knife. I'm using a very delicate touch here, gently, like a feather touch, allowing the paint to break a little bit and show some of that glue underneath in a bit of the canvas. Recall that I am painting on a textured canvas, so there are many ridges and hills and valleys in this texture, and I'm okay if I don't fill in all the cracks. In fact, I'm really fine with that. For the aesthetic that this piece is going to take at the end, leaving some of these natural gaps will really help in that regard. While you are painting, try not to press too hard with your knife, but allow it to move as it wants to. Also, be very careful not to overmix your colors. Part of the idea of this piece is that we're going to have these bold, pure colors interacting with one another. There can be a little bit of mixing and intermingling, but we want them to still be distinct. They're mixed together, but they're not becoming a new color. We're not going to be trying to mix them so much that you can't see the individual parts. So you want the two colors to be sort of overlapping, being intertwined, rather than really being mixed to the point that they're actually forming a different shade. Does that make sense? I hope it does. Be sure to clean off your spatula from time to time. It can become very muddy and messy. And again, that will ruin the pure color effect that you're trying, that I'm trying for in this piece. I'm going to be using the bottom of my spatula here to smear out that alizarin crimson. Now here's a neat effect. Pour a line of titanium white and then a line of cadmium yellow medium right next to it. In fact, I want there to be more yellow than white. Taking my clean spatula, I'm going to very gently blend the two together. This is going to form a very subtle gradation with the yellow and the white. Where the yellow hits the white, it's going to become lighter and a burst of pure white is going to be the brightest point. White is always the hottest color that you can find. The most bright color, I mean. The most fully saturated color you see in nature. So using and playing on this idea of putting white is going to make this effect of a glowing halo back in the distance, maybe perhaps behind this purple. And that's what I want. In fact, one of the first things that I knew or could visualize in my head about this piece was this yellow section here. Switching to some primary red, and this brand, for some reason, it looks a little bit more in the pink family. That's okay because I have purple already, and so I don't mind if it goes a little bit pink on me. I think I would have preferred more of a brick red, but I already kind of have that over with the mixture of alizarin and namthal red. So I didn't really mind it that it looked a little bit pink. I do know that acrylic paint will dry a little bit darker, so I think it can look okay in the end, and after it dried, it didn't look quite so pink. I decided that this bottom corner was going to be primarily dominated by this pink color. I'm going to come back and add some layers on top of it, so it won't be quite so dramatic and overwhelming, but I feel like it really holds down this left corner quite well for my composition. Speaking of composition, there is a principle that I am using that I want to make mention of right now. Every corner should have a number of objects intersecting the edge of the canvas. 
Now these objects could be things like trees and fields and sky in a more traditional landscape painting, or it may be, in my painting, color blocks that are intersecting and interacting with that edge of the canvas. My idea is to have different numbers of objects interacting with each of the edges. Primarily, we want to have at least two on each edge for the most amount of interest. At the top, you can already see that I have three main color blocks, perhaps arguably four, that are interacting. On the left, you have the purple, then the yellow, then the orange-red mixture, then the namthal red. I want to bring out this white a little bit more, so another line of the white. Then taking my palette knife, I'm going to spread out this alizarin crimson a bit better on the right-hand side. As you can see, I've made some progress in the bottom right-hand corner, bringing in some more of the cadmium yellow medium, and then bringing in a little bit of that namthal red and intermixing the two, making sort of a bright orange on the bottom right. Again, when painting this piece, or painting a piece like this painting, be very, very careful not to overmix the different color blocks. You want them to be visible, and you want them to be seen. I'm going to actually have to go back here a little bit later and redefine a few spots because I got a little bit carried away with my mixing. Here's a little bit more of the prism violet right now trying to compensate for some of the mixing I just did. I've decided to connect the purple from the top left down to the right hand side. This is part of that game I was playing with the composition that I mentioned earlier. Again, I'm keeping my knife work nice and relaxed so that some of these gaps are appearing throughout the composition and throughout the colors. I like to see some of the white peering through, and those spots where you can see it are really going to widen as the paint shifts around on top of this PVA glue before it really settles in and dries. And that's okay, because it's going to create this beautiful spider web of cracks, which will enhance the dimensionality of the texture, especially if the viewer gets right up close to the canvas. This work has a wonderful 3D quality. The paint literally seems to leap off the canvas and to be stuck in these huge globs onto it. This is partially helped by the PVA glue, but also by my liberal application of the paint. Here, I am better trying to define the left-hand edge of the titanium white. I want the white to appear that it is behind the purple, so I'm adding a little bit more of the purple on top of the white to achieve this effect. I'm now blending a little bit the cadmium yellow medium into the white, very gently to create a very soft pastel yellow. This is going to enhance the effect of the titanium white and the heat emanating behind this purple section. I decided to add a bit more of the orange here at the top right. It's going to pull the whole piece together, I believe, and I'm going to add a little bit over on the left-hand side as well. Again, trying to echo elements on the right, to the left, and to the bottom right to get a more unified composition. Continuing to spread out this paint, fill in the space a bit better. A little bit more on the top right. I'm going to bring that down and over to the center, but not yet, a little bit later. A little bit more of the namthal red and blend this in again. Working in layers here. More orange, then more red, and back and forth. Continuing to blend this section together a little bit more. Quick little strokes with my knife. Bringing the yellow into the orange and making a nicer transition at this point. 
yeah, it's starting to look a lot better. Here's a bit more of the cadmium yellow. Pulling a little bit of the excess there in the center and pushing it over to the side. Grabbing a little bit more of the cadmium orange hue. Still using that palette knife. Blending a few extra areas here and there. And then going back to the Namthal Red, which will help increase the heat in the center of this painting. Blending this together here, adding a little bit more of the cadmium yellow on the right hand side, becoming a little bit of an orange as it picked up some of that Namthal Red. But that's okay. I am not quite satisfied with it over on the right hand corner, so I'm going to work on it for the next few minutes here. Bringing in a little bit more of the cadmium orange hue. This piece again is sort of a balancing act. I'm starting with one thing, then trying something else. If I really hate it, I can go back and pull some of the excess paint off and try again. It's all about finding the right proportions and balance for the piece. More Namthal Red in the bottom here. Really want to increase the heat. Yeah, that's looking a lot better. Pure blocks of color is really the basis for this piece. Yeah, there's some blending and there's some mixing. But really, at the core, we want these nice, gorgeous blocks of color. I just want to mention that this painting, this abstract style of painting, is very easy to do. It looks really, really great. And even if you are not an advanced painter, it's okay. It's not that difficult to create a piece like this. All you need are a few colors and a palette knife or a spatula, and you're ready to go. It's not that hard. If you are not already familiar with using these types of tools for painting, like a spatula or a palette knife, then it's a great painting for you to practice on. Perhaps these colors are not your thing. Perhaps red and orange is too bright or doesn't match the decor in your own home, but you want a nice piece for, say, your living room or maybe a bedroom. Well, then find colors that you like, cooler blues, maybe some softer yellows. Colors that you want to paint can be a great way for you to create a very nice piece of art. You don't have to go and spend a lot of money on it, but you can do it yourself. Putting down some cadmium yellow medium on the bottom right to balance out the center portion with the heat of the white and the yellow at the top. I felt like the bottom right corner needed some more interest, and so I went back to the idea of a triangle. I may change this, and I think I do indeed change this as I go along, but that's just part of the process. Put some paint on the canvas, see how it looks, and then modify it from there. You can always go back, take some of it off, put some other paint over top of it, mix it together with another color, and you can modify as you go. Try not to overthink these paintings. You can get very bogged down in working in one little spot on the painting, trying to get all the little details perfect. One of the reasons why I love painting these larger abstracts is that it's less about the details and more about the global, the large-scale ideas behind the pieces. It's just a way for me to express the color, perhaps my feelings, whatever I want to try to capture. A particular pattern, perhaps I'm looking for a way to explore a painting idea, perhaps not an extraneous idea or a programmatic idea, something outside or extra artistic, but perhaps something related to just the process of painting. These works function really, really well as a vehicle for creative intuition and creative exploration. While I have been talking, I have added some prism violet to the top right corner, as well as some cadmium yellow medium below. Now I'm working on blending these spots together a little bit better and more effectively. Here you can see that I'm pulling the crimson upwards into the yellow and diffusing the intensity of that yellow. I felt that it was distracting from the brighter burst of yellow above, and I didn't want it to be competing quite so much.
Next, I will work on blending this orange and yellow together. I'm not quite satisfied with the bottom right corner, and we'll need to work on it a little bit more so that it functions better in the overall composition. A lot of what's going on here is working very well, and I like a lot of the sections overall, but this bottom right corner just needs some help. Using some quick little gestures, blending that primary red into the yellow. I am nearing the end of this piece. I think another five minutes and we should have it about done. Adding more of the cadmium orange hue here. For all of you who follow me regularly, thank you so much for supporting my art and for checking out these videos every week or so. I try to get them out about once a week, sometimes. Every other week, depending on how my weeks go, I do a couple other things, plus my regular day job in addition to painting. So finding time to paint and make these videos can be a little bit of a challenge every once in a while, but I do my best, and I want to thank you so much again for your support. For all of you who are watching maybe for the first time, please subscribe. Makes my day when I see someone else has followed me on my YouTube channel here. Every time I see a new subscriber, it makes me that much more motivated to keep putting out videos, to keep working on my current projects. Basically, please consider subscribing today. While I was talking, I added some cadmium orange hue on the top right sort of acting as a counterpoint to the swath of prism violet moving from left to right. Now we have the orange going the opposite direction in a crisscross going from top right to the center. I have decided here to bring in more of the alizarin crimson. This is also going to balance out that bottom right corner, which I have been struggling with up to this point. The way it balances out the composition is that I have alizarin crimson on the top left, now I also have it mirrored and echoed on the bottom right. I am now going to scrape off some of the yellow and the orange. The reason why is I want to bring that purple on the bottom left there across touching the edge of the canvas. Now if I just put the purple on top of the yellow, it may mix a little bit, and when you put purple and yellow together, it will make brown. Why? Well, because yellow and purple are complements. And whenever you mix a primary color with a secondary color that the primary color did not create, purple was made by mixing blue and red, yellow did not help to make purple, and so putting yellow and purple on top of each other can create a brown mess. So when I'm doing this, I'm thinking about some of the color combinations and the mixing of what the colors create, so I'm being very careful to not put the purple on top of that yellow as it will make a potential mess. I'm using a very light touch here, and that yellow is a little bit dry, so I am tempting fate by putting that tendril up there, but I think it's going to be okay. If you would like to learn more about basic color mixing, then be sure to check out my video on that topic. You should be able to find it under the playlist for beginning painters. Taking the edge of my spatula, I'm going to create a solid line cutting through all the layers of paint and revealing the white underneath. I'm doing this at a diagonal, which is going to intersect a vertical line here. Now this vertical line, I'm trying to be sure to be careful, to do it slowly, and to make it as straight as possible. It doesn't need to be perfect per se, but I really want it to be as straight as I possibly can get it without having to pull out a ruler. These lines are going to add a great amount of structure to this composition. Now all of these patches of colors are going to be in relation to these vertical lines. I can take a moment here and add another vertical line going off right here from the line to this edge of the canvas. All of these lines I've decided to push right to the edge of the canvas. I don't necessarily have to do that, but if I don't do that, they may end up looking more like tree branches, which is fine with me. Again, art is somewhat subjective, and you can create whatever you want 
The viewer may see it differently than you thought of it, but that's okay. In fact, if you wanted to, you could create a very nice old gnarled tree using the edge of your palette knife or the spatula, what have you, fixing a little hole there with some lizard and crimson. But for me, I really wanted to keep it more abstract than that, so the vertical lines are going to add that structure again, like I said. I'm going to widen this vertical line just a little bit. I feel like you couldn't see enough of the white, so I'm going to go back over it very carefully and make sure it's straight as much as possible. Yeah, that's looking a lot better. I'm much happier with that. Same thing with this one, trying to define the line a little bit better. Now here I'm adding some yellow to the bottom left corner. Wanted to balance out the right hand corner and I felt a little bit of yellow here would do the job. It really blends into the red and it makes a nice orange. I could have left it alone and more free. I think that side I did change a little bit once I turned the camera off, but I didn't do very much to it. I feel like I need one more vertical line. Now here I am purposely not making it match the angle of the top diagonal line, and I want it to cut down across this corner and sort of divide this corner up a little bit for me. All right, well you can buy my art at my Etsy shop, link below, as well as check out my art blog, Impulsive Artistry, also a link, will be below.